Hi, in this video, I want to talk about the stress weight connection and how to overcome it. In my job as a weight loss surgeon, I see many, many individuals who are trying several diets and intense exercise and workout programs, but they are not seeing lasting results. I have often said that the real challenge with weight loss is not weight loss, it is weight maintenance. You may be engaging in the most intense workout or you may be on a most exotic diet, but if you are not having the ability to maintain the weight and you're constantly having to work hard on it, that means something is missing. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you this one key pattern. It's a common thread that I see across all my clients. And that is something, if you get a handle on it, it will actually give you the lasting success that you're looking for. I'll also provide two key strategies in this video, which will allow you to overcome this common thread of challenge that I see across anybody who's seeking lasting health and weight loss success. Well, let me tell you, my name is Dr. Irving Deer. I'm a gastrointestinal and a weight loss surgeon, and the subject of obesity and gut health has been the central theme of my career. And the one common challenge that that I see amongst my patients is that of unregulated stress. Unregulated stress leads to heightened hormone in the body which is called cortisol and this cortisol hormone causes a preferential deposition of fat in the middle part. Regardless of your gender, this excess levels of cortisol will cause deposition of fat around your belly. It's called the visceral fat. It is the unhealthy fat which increases your risk of developing diabetes, heart problems, strokes, cancers and is generally referred to as a precursor to metabolic syndrome. See, stress response is really a survival response. This is something that used to happen when we were cavemen and we were in a survival mode all the time. And that is the reason why no matter which diet or which exercise program you may be implementing in your lifestyle, but if you're not able to manage your stress, this challenge with health and weight issues will keep showing up. So let me talk about two key strategies that I bring to the forefront with my patients so that they can start paying attention to it and also put in some corrective measures in place in order to achieve lasting success. The first thing is that of your sleep. If you do not understand that the whole thing around weight management is about sleep management, you will be missing the point by a mile. Now, what I mean by that is, see, sleep time has often been dubbed as repair time. It is a regenerative time. You process your emotions, memories, thoughts, ideas from whatever has happened, not just from the day, but sometimes from weeks, months, and years ago. So there is a lot of intense activity that is going on in that phase. And mind you, the outcome of that is that you might find that you are waking yourself tired, exhausted and drained even after having had having been laying in the bed for six to eight hours or you wake up feeling fresh and energized and ready to take on the next day just like we have a lymphatic system in the body and the function of lymphatic system is to clear the toxins there is a lymphatic system in your brain as well which is called the glyphatic system. The brain cells are called the glial cells, that's the covering. And that essentially is the glyphatic system is active at nighttime. It is doing the washouts and the cleanups and the detoxes and all of that. So from a medical perspective, you need six to eight hours of good quality sleep. Some of the tips that I often suggest to my patients is avoid screen time, avoid caffeine, alcohol in the evenings because it impacts your sleep. I know this may be at your social detriment, but not quite so if you think hard about it, but we won't go there just for now. And the third thing is to sleep on your side and not with a very heavy meal. So try and give a gap of about three to four hours between having your dinner and going to bed. So that is the first strategy that I would suggest that you start working on. The second thing is something that I refer to as forest bathing or green space time. And that is really time spent in nature. 
See, it, studies after studies have shown that spending time in nature allows us to feel more calm. In fact, there is a whole field of science which is called eco-psychology which is emerging. This is actually exploring the psychological impact of an individual's ecosystem. That means if you are actually spending a lot of time indoors in closed environments in front of screens and all of that, it is going to build up your stress levels. So what I often suggest to my patients is keep your technology away and give yourself 30 minutes either in the morning or in the evening to spend time with nature. Nature has rightly been called mother nature. When you go to the mother, the mother embraces its child without judgment. And studies have shown that people who go for walks in nature, they have reduced feelings of isolation. More importantly, they feel safe. When you are in a stressed mode, you feel unsafe. But when you are in nature, you have that feeling of calmness and safety and you, your mood is uplifted. So do think about these two strategies of sleep and green space time, which will help you overcome your stress levels. Ultimately, what this will do is it will allow you to be more mindful. And when you're mindful, you just naturally make healthier choices. And that is the way to self-empowerment. Thank you and take care.